we're going to be setting up an MCO ESM4430 as a high limit. We're going to be following our pre-programmed parameter list set um, using a multimeter to ohm out the switch to confirm operation and uh, programming in the air uh, the parameters. So we've got four buttons here, a program, uh, adjustment, uh, down, up, and a set function. Uh, what we're going to be doing always with adjusting parameters is pushing this P button to bring up the pass technician. We'll go now to the set button. Um, this brings up the run list. Um, we don't need to adjust the run list menu, so the first thing that we're going to be adjusting is this um, process input. Uh, so we go set. ISSL is the um, selector type of the um, uh, sensing element that we're going to be using. A type zero is thermocouple, so that's exactly what we want. Now the term, uh, temperature sensor selector, we want a number five. This is a type K solution, so that's what we want. In units Celsius, uh, lower limit is zero, upper limit 300. That allows us to essentially have a maximum range of zero to 300 based on what the operation is. Um, the process offset, we don't need to adjust this. And the input filter time, this is one second. Uh, this is cold conjunction. Um, we want to have this on yes. It essentially compensates for the metal being cold. And then we go to our next menu. PID we don't adjust. It's on on off configuration. So we go to the process config. Now the OCNF function. What this is is essentially your output configuration. We don't adjust it. We just leave it as one. Um, next is the uh, the operation of that function. It should be cooling. It probably comes as default as heat. It doesn't matter. We don't use it. Um, the next is the control type on off. Yes, that's correct. Instead of PID. Hysteria. We want to make sure that it's a zero hysteria um, as well as the uh, HYN function, which is hysteria mode. We just leave that as the standard default is number one. Um, the off time we don't want to have a delay in off time, so it's set to zero. And then we're done with this menu. Now, alarm one programming. So, LOU1, this is the output configuration. We're not adjusting that. Um, the ALT1, which is the alarm type, the zero function is for high temperature alarm, so that's what we want. Alarm hysteria one. This is important because we don't want it to be any hysteria off of our set point, so we leave that at, or we set that to zero. It comes default as 10. Now, AON on comes default as zero. We don't want a time delay, so we leave that at zero seconds. Now, AOF1. A lot of people ask me, how do I get that function essentially to go latch? What you have to do is push and hold the right button until. It continuously counts up, it will get faster, it doesn't count by ones, and it will go to latch function. What this means is it will hold the alarm latch until a cycling of power. So you have to unset the power from the switch to actually unlatch the alarm. Um, the alarm S1, that function is the output selection. Um, we don't need to change that, it's a default of zero. And we're done here. The general configuration. The only thing that we're going to do here is we would look at this. It doesn't matter as long as the variables on this are um, uh, set to again that previous range. So basically, you give your customer the option where he wants to set it. Usually, I put it like 70C on low with your maximum at 300, which is what we're set out to be as the maximum temperature, 600 Fahrenheit. That's a critical alarm. Exit out of these, back to the main, push P. Now we have a current. So for instance, ambient, I'm reading 90. I'm not adjusting anything with these buttons because this is just a current process screen. Let's push the set button here. This is your preset. So. In reality, this doesn't have any functionality over this control, so we're not using this, this as a heater or cooler. Push the set function again, alarm one. Now, it's set up for 70C. Typically, we send these out at 300C, but what I would like to do is leave it at 70. I will 
attach the the wire with the um, sensor on the end it is a type k thermocouple wire that i have here in this instance i just wrapped it um, just to give me an alarm output um, what happens is in the event let's see if i can focus this it says a01 so i have tripped this alarm by breaking the wire connection here it's gone past 70c so you can see i put my finger on there it's climbing temperature so we know it's sensing correctly um, i know ambient here is about 21 and uh, um, what will happen is on the back side of this controller it's laid out here on the top actually we're going to be using numbers 9 and 10 for our alarm out one we use number 12 and 11 for our power input and our sensor will actually be connected red as the negative to number one yellow to the positive is number two so here's a demonstration it says all the numbers so what i normally do is i double check the functionality of nine and ten when you break one of the wires off of the back of the sensor it will actually give you an error function so let's see if i can separate these wires one hand here let's see there we go so see how it gives this sensor error what will happen is my output one function will light up in this instance breaking uh, or activating this functionality across 9 and 10 and it will pull in my latching alarm to break the flame circuit so in the event that the sensor dies and gives us an S error or the other application of it reaching its alarm set point the flame circuit has um, essentially activated the alarm relay breaking the uh, flame control circuit and stopping the process. Hope this helps guys, and let me know if there's any more questions, just post it in the comments below.